Welcome back to Album in Process. It's been a while since I've made any videos, but uh, I've got a couple of special projects that I'm working on, and so I wanted to share them with you through a series of tutorials. The first one's going to be about creating pinhole cameras for a digital SLR camera. So I'm going to use my old uh, Canon 5D, and I'm going to be using a, a body cap in order to produce uh, the pinhole. And it's a great way to kind of reconnect with some alternative processes, the old kind of uh, technology, uh, along with the digital um, cameras. And so it's going to be a pretty simple process. We're actually going to do a series of, of different pinholes along the way. Uh, we're going to start with the very simplest one, which is just basically creating a, a hole in the lens cap and then using some brass shim to go ahead and create the very small and fine pinhole and then we're going to be attaching that and we'll do some tests today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we need a, a nice hole for the for the pinhole and so I'm going to go ahead and move the camera out of the way and a couple of parts that we don't need. And we're also going to need a, a drill and I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the largest drill bit that I have so we have a nice opening so there's not going to be any vignetting or, or cutting off. And then uh, when we go to drill through this, it's always a good idea to have something to back it with. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and use a, a piece of wood that you can tell obviously has been used a few times for, for uh, kind of a backer for drilling. And then it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and clamp that down so it's not going to move on you in case the once the drill bit gets through there, sometimes it wants to try to swing a little bit, so we'll just grab a quick, uh, quick couple of clamps, and we'll just put a clamp on it so that it's not going to, to move anywhere. Alright, All right, so at least the piece of wood will be secure. We can probably hold on to this tightly with our fingers. Uh, we're just going to be drilling lightly, and then once it pushes through, when it grabs onto the wood, at least it's not going to go kind of spinning for us. And so, just want to try to get in the center. If you're off a little bit, it's not going to be the end of the world because we can center the pinhole to the uh, to the hole that we end up making here. So I'm just going to go nice and slow, allow the bit to start kind of working its way through. There's the first part of it, and then we'll just allow it to cut the rest of the way through. All right, so now we've got a hole in the front of our lens cap. So you can see when it started to drill, uh, the bit moved over a little bit. But again, like I said, it's not really going to make a big difference exactly where it is within our lens cap. We're just going to be covering this up and, and placing the hole over top of that. Um, so let me just clean this back up a little bit, and then we'll move forward to the next step. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to be taking a piece of this brass shim and placing it over top of the, the hole that we've drilled inside of the, the, the body cap. So uh, I really prefer these brass, brass shims. Um, they're nice and thick. They're nice and flat as well. Um, an alternative to using the brass is to go ahead and just use a piece of aluminum can. Uh, the, only kind of disadvantage to the aluminum can is it's got a little bit of a curve to it up, you know, already, and so it takes a little bit of it, you know, getting to flatten out. Um, if it has that curl, it's going to want to kind of pop off of the front of here, and you have to use a lot of tape or glue to try to keep it in place. So starting off with something that's nice and flat, uh, you know, really kind of works best. And I'm just going to cut off a small little corner of this so that it'll be big enough to cover our hole but then small enough to not use a lot of extra uh, brass shim than we need to. 
And then as we go to go ahead and put the hole inside of the piece of brass, uh, it's always a good idea to have a backing. So I'm just going to use a little small piece of wood. A piece of cardboard works really well, as, you know, in addition. Um, whatever you've got around, just something that the, the pen's able to go through. And we've got a couple of options. So I've got this old awl, and it'll work pretty well, but if you look at the tip of it, it's, it's a little bit kind of large for what we want inside of a pinhole. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take one of these small needles, that are used just for kind of tacking and sewing and I'm going to go ahead and cut off a little piece of this and attach it to the other end of the awl so that I can use it uh, for making pinholes. So I'm just simply going to take a pair of kind of wire snips and then go ahead and kind of at an angle cut off this piece of, of metal. That way it'll have a little bit of a point to it. And then just simply um, oops. go ahead and kind of with the pointy side out kind of put it into the center of the awl and then I'm just going to press down uh, into the wood so that both penetrates the the actual uh, awl and then also into uh, the wood so that it goes in there. So then what we're going to do is just in the very center of our piece of brad, our, our brass, we're just going to make a, a, a hole. And I like to, as I go to do it, just give it a little bit of a twist, kind of as if like a drilling motion, um, so that you can go nice and clean. We want the hole to be as kind of perfectly circular as possible uh, and as small as possible. The smaller the opening is, the the more or less light it's going to going to let through, but also the sharper it's going to be. So as we look through there, we should have a nice clean circle. Um, you know, the, the less we press in, the, the, the smaller it's going to be. And the next part that we'll want to do is usually you, there's going to be a little bit of like a kind of like a jagged edge on the back from where the pin is pushed through the metal. So what I'll usually do is just take a very small piece of, of sandpaper and get in here and just give it a little bit of a, a sand to kind of smooth out that back part. And so if you just go ahead and give it a, a little bit of a sand, it'll smooth that out and make it kind of a perfectly circular. Okay. There we go. So now we have our pinhole. So now that we've got the pinhole made, the, the next step that we're going to be doing is to go ahead and, and attach that to the, the body cap. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and grab some black tape. And so at this point, we've got an opportunity to go ahead and center the, the pinhole to kind of the center of the body cap. So even though our hole may have not been perfectly uh, aligned, then we can go ahead and at this point, um, I usually will put a little piece of tape on there to kind of hold it in place and then looking through here, kind of line that up so that the pinhole is about at the center. Even though it's slightly uh, askew, it'll be okay. Um, we shouldn't have any cutoff with the amount of opening that we've got there. And so we'll just go ahead and attach that directly on and then seal that up on the other sides as well. and just make sure that we've got tape holding it down uh, on all sides so we don't have any light leaking through there. There we go. Okay. So now we've got that kind of holding it in place. We've got that um, and no light leaking through the front. Uh, we've got our pinhole now kind of on the back side and so then the next step is just to really go ahead and attach this onto the camera and let's see what happens. So on our camera, we'll just go ahead and loosen up the, the lens that's on there and we'll place this lens onto the body. And there we go. There is our new pinhole camera. 
and so we're going to go ahead and go outside and do some testing. As far as the camera is concerned, it's going to not give us any option for f-stop because a couple of reasons. There's no electrical connections here, so it can't transfer any of that information, not that there is any. So we're just going to have to do some testing, do some guessing about, about what exposure it should be. Uh, maybe start at about a second and see from there, starting off with ISO 100. And then once we do a couple of tests, we can figure out what is the actual uh, f-stop of, of this pinhole. Uh, for future reference. So if we're trying to calculate exposure in different situations based on the basic daylight exposure, we can start to, to make some fairly accurate calculations once we kind of determine that baseline of full sun and how many seconds is it going to take, then we can figure out what our f-stop is. All right, let's go outside and take a look. So outside I did some initial testing and it seems like the, the opening here in, in our in our uh, pinhole is a little bit too big. Um, it's working out. I, I tried it one second. Initially, we'll look at some of the, the pictures, but um, what ended up happening is at one second, it was a little bit too bright, so I reduced the amount of time a little bit. We ended up in full sunlight at about an eighth of a second to a sixth of a second. So based on basic daylight exposure, we're ending up with an f-stop around uh, 45. So Really, we should have our, our f-stop for a pinhole a little bit closer to like maybe 128. So we need to cut a couple more stops worth of light. Uh, the smaller it is, the sharper it will be. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way for a second and go ahead and, and make another pinhole. So I'm just going to go ahead and make another little piece of brass here. And then we'll just, uh, as we go to make... The opening just try to keep the the very tip of the pin going through and uh, try to make the smallest hole we possibly can. So here we go. So I'm just gonna lightly drill and then kind of check and see. Yep, okay. So even there we've just barely started to make it through the surface, so that should be a lot smaller. And so again, let's go ahead and just give it a little bit of a sanding. And yeah, I can see that we've got light there. Should be significantly smaller. So let's go ahead and grab our camera again. And then uh, this time what I'd like to do is go ahead and we'll pull this off. While we're waiting, go ahead and keep that capped. And what I'd like to do, just so I don't forget, is to go ahead and make a little notation on here. Um, go ahead and write about what the f-stop was. So I'm just going to grab a Sharpie. And then on here, I'm just going to write uh, 45 for the f-stop, just so that I can remember about what it was in case I want to use it again later for something that's a little more like a David Armstrong sort of a photo that might have a little bit more uh, out of focus area. Let's go ahead and set that back there. And we'll go ahead and just get this one taped on and that way we're ready to go back outside and start testing again. So again, the main thing is just to get it attached on here and uh, get it so that it's in the center. So again, I would just flip it over and take a quick look and see. And again, try to kind of cheat it over a little bit so it's closer to the center of where our actual uh, center of the lens is. And then just cover up the tape on all sides. And then we'll go back out and test and see. And again, we'll start with one second as the exposure time and then just kind of work our way up or down from there. And then based on that one second exposure, we can start to calculate again, keeping in mind if, uh, if we're shooting at ISO 100, then with an f-stop of f-16, it'll take one, one hundredth of a second. So from there, we can start to calculate backwards if we have a one second exposure. Uh, plus or minus, then we can start to figure out, based on basic daylight exposure, what should be the f-stop of our pinhole. Alright, so I'm just going to swap this back out and then 
go back outside, take a couple more tests, and then we'll see where we're at. All right, be back in a minute. So I just got back from doing the test of the second pinhole, and the results are significantly better. So with the first one, if you remember, the problem was that the hole was a little bit too big, even from this very small pinhole, uh, or from pin. So I went ahead and made a slightly smaller one, and so I, I tested it again at one second, and the exposure was right on the money. So based on the basic daylight exposure wheel, which in my class we, we use a lot in the very beginning to kind of get a good understanding of the correlation between equivalent exposures, f-stop, shutter speeds, those sort of things. So with this it will be really helpful because it helps kind of um, visualize those differences. So I've got it set to ISO 100 here, or in this case it's 125 because it's an old one. And these are all of our equivalent exposures, and again we're basing our exposure off of F16 and 1, 125 being a match. And so at the one second exposure, so if we go along here, one second gives us an f-stop of 180 and so we had the ISO on the camera set to 100 and since we're getting a good exposure at one second in full sunlight then we're going to go ahead and assume that our, our f-stop for our pinhole in here is 180. So that's really helpful because now that we know what f-stop we've got it's easy to calculate other things. So I also went into the shade and uh, took a few pictures inside of the shade so knowing that the shade's three stops difference in open shade, I was able to just increase the exposure by three stops. So if we were to do that on the exposure wheel, well, we could just rotate this. So uh, I'll look here at 180, and right now it's lining up with one second. And so here it shows me that open shade's plus three, so I would go one, two, three stops, which gives me eight seconds. In my head when I was out there, I just went ahead and said, well, if I've got one second, I can just double it, two seconds, four seconds, eight seconds, and that would be my three stops of exposure that I need for the shade. Um, and so the exposures worked really well. I went into a kind of a darkened um, screen room that we have, and the exposure was a little bit dark in there, so I opened up another stop, which would have been four stops. And so at 15 seconds, I was able to get a good exposure there as well. So being able to use the basic daylight exposure wheel and being able to make calculations makes it really easy to figure out what should be my exposure since the light meter is not really going to work inside of here uh, at such low amounts of, of light. If I wanted to do something and maybe even shoot inside, let's say I wanted to go inside the house and take some pictures, I could start to figure out my basic daylight exposure from there as well. So typically I'll use interior kitchen, which is plus eight stops. So if I was looking here at the IS, or the f-stop of 180 and I rotated it eight stops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see we kind of are running out of shutter speeds over here because my camera has a maximum shutter speed of a 30, of 30, 30 seconds. So what I could then do though is look here and go, well, I'm one, two, three stops away from where I wanted to be. So if I have a three stop difference here and I can't get a longer exposure and obviously I can't make my pinhole any bigger, then the only option is to make the camera more sensitive to light. So what I would then do is go, well, if I'm three stops off, I'm going to increase my ISO so I pick up that sensitivity. So I would just calculate ISO 200, 400, 800. So that gives me the three stops that I need in order to get the correct exposure. And so I'll just go ahead and set the camera to ISO 800 and put my shutter speed at the longest that I have, which is 30 seconds, and do some test exposures for that. And just based on the basic daylight, should be in pretty good shape. There may be some variation also, you know, the different lighting conditions may change. We also probably will start to have some reciprocity failure at 30 seconds, so it may not quite pick up all the exposure that we want, but we should be in pretty close uh, in the ballpark. So let's go try that out, and otherwise we should be in great shape. We can just start shooting in any condition now that we know what the f-stop of our, of our uh, pinhole is.